Hi everyone. Good morning, guys. I hope I am audible and visible to all of you. Can I get a quick confirmation, please? If the AV seems to be fine, all's going well, then we'll start without any delay. And till the time everyone gives me a confirmation, I'll just remind you about two things. Number one, that coming Sunday, that is May first, there is the All India Mock Test, which is going to be conducted at morning nine o'clock, and that's going to be on the An Academy app. It's a free live test for everyone, so please do make use of it. And second update is, which is lasting only for uh, today, today being the last date. Uh, there's a twenty percent off going. on all the subscription so all of you who wish to avail this offer can do so by today midnight okay so yes i have received a confirmation from everyone and um, seems to be going well perfect okay so i hope all of you did get the uh, pdf that i circulated on the group yesterday and the pdf had a lot of images in it so this is basically an image based discussion it's a lot of spotters that you'll get in the exam and uh, those are important for you so we'll start i hope you've got your tentative answer ready and uh, once you know you've got some kind of answer in your mind you'll know whether you've gone right wrong or if you've made a mistake then where did you go wrong so let's start with image number 1 image number 1 i tried not to give you any history because then obviously there's a bias that is created so there were two pictures which were given to us out here and this image is of i hope i can i would also welcome all the answers that you thought of so the first picture over here if i talk about this i see three things in this photo number 1 i see these kind of spaces yes i can see some spaces over here right here what are these that belongs to the lungs so these are basically the alveoli and how am i so confident that these happen to be the alveoli okay many of you have said anthracosis uh maybe not half of your diagnosis is right i'm still waiting for the uh, right answer the diagnosis out here so why did many of you call it anthracosis because number one i could see alveoli and then all of you could also see this black color pigment obviously in the lungs when i see black color pigment all of us think of carbon that is anthracosis okay so all of you thought that ma'am this is either something to do with coal workers pneumoconiosis or this is something to do with anthracotic pigment i totally agree with you but then did you look at the other side of the picture did you see what are these cells and these cells are brown in color no one's given me an answer to that except for one or two yes i've got one or two rare answers what are these cells guys brown color pigment think what brown color pigments do you know i'll make a list in the brown color pigment number 1 i know melanin now melanin in the lungs is not sounding correct obviously the next brown color pigment that i know is lipofuscin so when i talk about lipofuscin again will i need the age this is an old age pigment nothing about the age was also mentioned over here i know another brown color pigment and that is known as hemosiderin yes and i also know one disease in which hemosiderin in the lungs is known as heart failure cells hemosiderin within which cells hemosiderin within macrophages and these are referred to as the heart failure cells this was a case of heart failure cells which sided heart failure do we see it in which sided heart failure shows you these heart failure cells remember the left sided heart failure the left sided heart failure is very famous for showing heart failure cells or hemosiderin within macrophages now next if you want to um, okay many of you said right sided guys right sided heart failure doesn't affect the lungs immediately right sided heart failure more commonly affects uh, you know venous congestion happens venous congestion happens in the liver in the spleen and other body organs heart failure cells are more common with left sided heart failure okay now you say that ma'am i want to confirm this brown color pigment so now you know it's a case of hemosiderin if you wanted to confirm it hemosiderin is nothing but iron so if you wanted to confirm it you had to put something called the prussian blue or the pearl stain so this is exactly the next photo that was given to you did you all look very carefully that all those cells were showing now a bluish color why did all of them suddenly turn blue in color because i have used a stain called the prussian blue or the pearl stain so i hope everyone's got the diagnosis right guys this is a case of heart failure cells where hemosiderin is present within the macrophages is that okay with everyone can we proceed forward let's move on to the next image that we had and uh, this is what you have to attempt 
what is the answer to this spotter number 2 spotter number 2 and answer gross photo microscopic picture Perfect. So, I've got an answer that is emphysema. Now, I agree with your answer, guys. Now, I just need to know why did you guys think of emphysema out here? Now, when I'm talking about emphysema, number one, I look at the air spaces. When I look at the air spaces, I realize that ideally, if I would have drawn an air space, it would have had connections. Alveoli would have had walls, right? It would have had proper walls over here. Now, that is not seen. What do I see over here? All the connections are broken. All the walls are broken. Look at this one. All the walls in between are broken. Why has that happened? Because somewhere exactly that is what happens in a case of emphysema. My first question to you is emphysema is a reversible or an irreversible damage. So please remember this happens to be a permanent damage. This happens to be a permanent damage to the walls. And the same thing you can see over here. I'm not seeing any one round alveoli like that. No, I'm seeing all the walls are broken. All the walls are broken and that is what you call as floating septa. This is what you refer to as as floating septa. So please remember the two findings, damage to the walls, floating septa. This is a picture that we expect in the exam which will guide you towards emphysema. So I think everyone's got that also right and I can move on to another very important. This was just for quick confidence boost because I know all of you definitely know the answer to that and I have no doubt in your uh, ability to identify this picture. So I gave you a tiny little hint also. What you see over here are something to do with dumbbell shaped. Very good. So when I say dumbbell shaped, so dumbbell shaped comes to my mind as asbestos fiber. Yes, it comes to my mind as asbestos or asbestos fiber. And if I want to use a special stain, so we all know that for example, if this is an asbestos fiber, if this is an asbestos fiber, what will cover it when it when we inhale it? When we inhale it, what covers is it? Iron. We cover it with iron. And if I cover it with iron, then I have a special stain in front of me. For iron, I know I just discussed, we will always use the Prussian blue or the pearl stain. Always and always Prussian blue or the pearl stain, which everyone has got right. And we can see the same dumbbell shaped configuration here as well. So remember, this is a classical case of an asbestos fiber dumbbell shaped with Prussian blue stain very important for the exam one more picture which I want to put out to you which we expect this time the next spotter it's much much expected especially INICET so students please get this right again this is again to do with the lungs and a very very important finding I can see one alveoli let me trace it I can see one alveoli over here this is this happens to be one alveoli right so I'll label it and then what do I see perfect most of you are right on that alveoli I see on that wall these tumor cells are sitting these tumor cells are sitting on the wall perfect perfectly said so if for example if this is the alveolar wall I see that the tumor cells are sitting like a butterfly and that is referred to as two things actually three things three names can come either they can call it <coughs> butterfly on fence Either they can call it butterfly on fence appearance or they can refer to it as picket fence appearance or they can refer to it as lepidic pattern. These are the three words that they use in the exam which are very very important. Please remember repeating again. Number one, butterfly sitting on a fence or picket fence or lepidic pattern and what tumor am I talking about? Either of the terms that I use, adenocarcinoma in situ of the lung. Remember, I've used a very characteristic word. I'm calling it adenocarcinoma in situ. So, I'm calling it a precancerous condition. So, if they ask you lepidic type of adenocarcinoma or lepidic type of lung cancer, you'll say it's most commonly AIS, which is a precancerous condition, adenocarcinoma in situ. No, filigree pattern, someone says, Dr. P, filigree pattern, not a very common thing which is used out here. These are the three names that you need to refer to over here. 
picket fence, butterfly on fence or lepidic pattern. Okay, much expected question and I hope you will be able to pick it up. 99% of the cases, this should be the same photo that will be put out to you. Now, having said that, there's one more picket fence in pathology that you study. When I talk about the different types of picket fence, there's one more picket fence. One I've told you, the adenocarcinoma in situ lung. One of them happens to be on a pap smear. That also shows you, you can call it butterfly on fence or you can call it picket fence. Yes, what on pap smear? What on pap smear? There's some cell, uh, squamous cell, endocervical cell. Which cell shows us? Yes, everyone's right, but which cell? Perfect, I've got the answer. Endocervical cells. Endocervical cells can show us picket fence appearance. So again, please remember, that's a question that you can definitely get in the paper. Which of the following show us the different picket fence appearance? Okay, having said that, let's move on to the next spotter that I gave you all. It was a, you know, a series of images. You had to identify the organism and you had to identify every feature of it also. Every feature also had to be identified. So I think organism to was quite a simple one. When I look at so many photos, I can easily identify that this happens to be a case of Staphylococcus aureus. Let me dissect every picture now. So first and foremost, let me write the word. All of you have called it Staphylococcus. What do I understand by every word of this? Staphylococcus aureus. So when I say Staphyle, the word Staphyle means this. How will it look like? It will look like a bunch of grapes. That's the meaning of the word staphyle. Staphyle ka matlab hota hai bunch of grapes. And that is exactly what I see over here. After that I'll ask you is it a coccus or is it a bacillus? So you'll say ma'am staphylococcus dot dot dot. They are dot 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 kind of organisms. They are round coci. Okay having said this what do we mean by aureus? Aureus means golden color. The name aureus refers to golden color. So what is so golden about Staphylococcus? Let's look at the next picture. Let's zoom into it. I've got two media given in front of me, right? One of them happens to be the first one, the usual one. This happens to be the blood agar. And if I see what has happened on a blood agar, you'll say, ma'am, if that dot is Staphylococcus, there's a very narrow clearing around it. That is what I refer to it as. Staphylococcus shows only a narrow zone of hemolysis. There's a very narrow zone which is created where blood is broken, hemolysis. Blood is broken in a very narrow zone. That is what you see on a blood agar. Versus if I ask you this colorless medium, this colorless medium is what? This happens to be a nutrient agar and if i ask you what is the color that it has given on a nutrient agar you'll agree that it is a yellow golden pigment what is the name of that pigment guys that is why i call this staph aureus aureus means golden right very good so tell me guys what is the name of this golden color pigment it is known as staphyloxanthin this pigment is known as staphyloxanthin because it's golden in color, it's produced by Staphylococcus, we call it Staphyloxanthin. Next question. For example, if the Staphylococcus is over here, then the pigment is also here. Then when the Staphylococcus is over here, the pigment is also here. When the Staphylococcus is here, the pigment is here. Do I see it going anywhere else where Staphylococcus is not there? Do I see it diffusing out? Yes or no? Do I see it coming out into the empty spaces? You don't. It is not growing anywhere else. It has a rule that if Staphylococcus is here, golden color is here. If Staphylococcus is here, golden color is here. It's not going anywhere else. So remember, this happens to be a kind of a non-diffusible pigment. That's the next question that you'll get in the paper. What kind of a pigment is it? It is a non-diffusible pigment expected question so what are the points on blood agar narrow zone of hemolysis on nutrient agar golden yellow pigment known as staphyloxanthin and finally that is a non-diffusible pigment perfect what was the third photo given to me these two are done now let's go on to this there's a slide given to me so let's move on to that slide based one slide is referred to as positive because it's showing the presence of a lot of bubbles and the other side slide is said to be negative because it does not show you bubbles. Remember this bubble related test is said to be a catalase test. 
whenever i say that the catalase test is positive you will see the presence of bubbles so that is the best way and easiest way of picking it up in the exam if you see the presence of bubbles sorted catalase test positive and is staphylococcus catalase positive definitely yes staphylococcus aureus is a catalase positive organism okay let's look at the next picture now next picture is a yellow color medium what is this now this happens to be a selective medium okay i gave you half the answer i've called it a selective medium anyone else who wants to call this name of the medium and property of the medium one answer i ended up speaking out myself that this happens to be a selective medium tell me the name and tell me one more property of this okay name i've got everyone is trying to call it msa that is mannitol salt agar fine so one is mannitol salt agar happens to be a selective medium is it also something else perfect it's also a differential medium it happens to be both it is a selective medium as well as a differential medium very very good so let's try and analyze what i've said over here when i say selective medium i mean selectively for staph aureus selectively for staph aureus what is so selective about it they've kept a nice concentration of salt salt is what makes it selective that you know the salt will only allow staph aureus to grow others will not grow so salt will only allow the staph aureus to grow what is differential see differential means like you do difference between yes or no so over here if you see the other component very good which many of you have mentioned is the other component used over here is mannitol because what are they trying to differentiate they are trying to find the differentiation between is it mannitol fermenting or is it not mannitol fermenting so please remember the differential aspect comes from mannitol fermentation and yes when mannitol fermentation occurs we get a yellow color that is the reason there is this yellow bright color that you're seeing over here because staph aureus is very famous for fermenting mannitol i hope both the points are clear why is it selective because it has salt why is it differential because it has mannitol so in the exam when you get a question that mannitol salt agar is what kind of a medium both differential and selective i hope this is clear and that makes an entire summary guys an entire summary of whatever we've read has been put up over here so this is a case of staph aureus where you see grape like clusters narrow zone of hemolysis golden yellow pigment called staphyloxanthin catalase positive bubbles and finally it is mannitol fermenter all said and done we can move on to the next image the next image happens to be this obviously a part of the photo was visible so the organism was definitely there so you had to basically this was something that i gave to you for just a quick revision rather than answering so i think these two photos are something which are very very characteristic perfect so what do i see first and foremost i see that there's a capsulated organism and streptococcus pneumoniae has what has been written over here streptococcus pneumoniae is what was written over here very very good they wanted you to identify these colonies and only for a revision i've got you if you look at these colonies look at the periphery if you look the periphery of the colonies are elevated and the center is depressed exactly like a carom coin there's a depressed center we call this two names either we can call it a carom coin colony or we can call it a drottsman colony carom coin colony or drottsman colony are the two names that have been given to it and that's very very characteristic of streptococcus pneumonia so this was again a question which was given for quick quick revision and i hope you guys have revised it okay let's move on to the next spotter guys going very well let's pick up the next spotter again a series of pictures given so that we can analyze everything properly let's start with the clinical aspect the very first picture given to us over here i can see a membrane in the tonsillar region in the soft palate number 1 okay so i've got the answer it's a case of corini bacterium diphtheria good so what i see over here is a kind of a pseudo membrane number 1 what i see over here is a pseudo membrane then i see in the next image there's marked swelling in the region of the neck the neck and the tonsillar region is markedly swollen so what do you call it you call it 
bull's neck appearance very good this is referred to as the bull's neck appearance and both of these are very very characteristic things that you have to learn for corine bacterium diphtheria now let's move on to the next picture let's pick up this one the gram staining so let's take this up on a you know on a separate slide when i'm talking about gram staining uh, firstly what do i see purple color when i see a purple color or i see a violet color i know for a fact that i'm talking about a gram positive organism that is why i'm seeing that purple color violet color because it's gram positive and next if i look at the shape this one is looking like a v this one is looking like another random v this one is looking like a straight line this one looks like an l so i'm getting all sorts of random shapes out here l shape v shape this is said to be the chinese letter appearance this is defined as the chinese letter appearance also known as the cuneiform appearance chinese letter appearance or cuneiform appearance because you can see all you know random letters being made out of it all random letters that are being made out of it so cuneiform appearance and chinese letter for that reason now if i say what is the reason for this any reason guys any reason why no other bacteria makes this v l and these kind of things what is the reason for this chinese letter that we are talking about it's the division see if this is a bacteria and this wants to divide divide multiply 1 to 2 2 to 4 so when it divides into two daughter cells so first it was single now it is divided into two daughter cells those daughter cells don't separate out can you see they've been attached so all those random shapes that you are getting are because of something known as the division property and that is also referred to as snapping that is also known as snapping type of division and that is the reason we get that classical chinese letter or cuneiform or v l and all of those kind of appearances look at the next photo the next photo that was given to you over here was obviously a special stain first i want this has been like an all time favorite question so i'll look at it at a separate slide when i look at this picture let me see the properties first before i go to the stain what is the property i see that i see another dumbbell kind of a thing another dumbbell thing what am i seeing the organism is green in color number 1 and after that when i notice that the ends have become purple in color the ends over here are purple in color very good so i can say that this organism over here is corine bacterium diphtheria and why are the ends looking like this because these ends are known as the volutin granules these ends are referred to as volutin granules which have been given a lot of names where are the volutin granules present the volutin granules are present at the poles right <clears throat> they are present at the poles of the bacteria so we call them bipolar granules we call them bipolar granules next with they've been given another fancy name and that is known as the babes ernst granules they've been called as the babes ernst granules and one last fancy name they have been called as the metachromatic granules first you have to learn all these names then i'll come to the properties repeating they are present at the poles so i call them bipolar they are volutin babes ernst and metachromatic granules now let's come down to how did we stain it what is this stain that has been used over here the stain used over here is the very very characteristic albert staining and for albert stain we have a protocol which you get in the exam tim protocol which everyone was writing yes albert staining comprises of three stains or three steps that is tim number 1 T stands for toluene blue. So if someone asks you that why did see uh, if you look at this photo, what colors do you see? You see two colors, right? You'll say, ma'am, over here I see a purple color. Over here I see a green color. So you have to use one purple color stain, one green color stain. That is what you have to do in your staining protocol. So the toluene blue is what gives it the purple color. If you see these uh, volutin granules, they have been stained. That is something referred to as by by toluene blue okay having said that now we come to the green color so the green color is by malachite green they've used a stain over here called malachite green and in between what have they used very good they've used iodine so what is the final three things first you use toluene blue then you use iodine then you use malachite green and if they ask you organism stains what in color you'll say organism stains green in color and volutin granule stain what in color they are purple in color
that photo also completed let's put a tick mark let's come to the selective medium what is this mentioned over here i've given you a big hint also what is this uh, mentioned over here guys i've told you it's a selective medium so the selective medium for corine bacterium diphtheria happens to be potassium telluride agar so finally finally we say that the selective medium is going to be potassium telluride agar and the trick is wherever in microbio tellurium is mentioned tellurium is mentioned or telluride is mentioned the color that you'll be getting will be black tellurium telluride wherever we have these kind of words written the color that you'll get will be black and that is exactly what you see over here repeating this happens to be a selective medium okay so i think this set of pictures is also done should we move on to the next one again an all-time favorite 10 star spotter image that we have 10 star spotter image Okay, before that, sorry, before that, Dr. Reddy has a question. What about lofflers? Okay, yes, for rapid diagnosis, I agree. See, Dr. Reddy, when we are talking about Corine bacterium diphtheria, either we can have something called an enriched media. Number one, what we can use is enriched media. Number two, what we can use is a selective media. Now, the enriched media that we have, the enriched media that we have is the loffler serum slope. Loffler. Uh, hi guys, are we connected back? Yes, I think I can see myself live again. Okay, so when we are talking about the enriched media, we are talking about what? We are talking about Loeffler serum slope, number one. And when we are talking about LSS, what we know as, which we very famously know as LSS. When we talk about selective media, we talk about potassium telluride agar. So first and foremost, how do I learn that? Enriched. If you count the number of alphabets, enriched has a total of 8 alphabets. If you count the number of alphabets in Loeffler, it has a total of 8 alphabets. And if you ask me, ma'am, how much time will it take for growth? It will take approximately 6 to 8 hours for growth. So please remember, enriched has 8 alphabets, Loeffler has 8 alphabets. Time for growth is also somewhere 6 to 8 hours. Whereas when we are talking about PTA, that is potassium telluride agar, it takes longer. It takes approximately 48 hours. So definitely it's a selective media, but the time constraint is there. It takes a lot of time. So like you asked me, Dr. Reddy, that if I want to do a rapid diagnosis, then definitely the shorter method is the enriched media, which is Loeffler serum slope. 888. Eight, eight. I hope you'll remember it like that. Okay, having said that, now we can come back to our picture, the 10 star photo, which I did. Uh, see... A lot of you did give me a right answer. Okay, this actually had two photos, A and B. So first we'll analyze A, the A one obviously being the normal one. And what do I see in this normal picture? This is the classical filtration membrane. This happens to be the classical filtration membrane. And now we talk about the three layers. We have to know the three layers. It's an all-time favorite question. When I look at the three layers, number one on the outside, these feet, these feet or podocytes that I see, I see the presence of podocytes or visceral epithelial cells. I see the presence of podocytes or visceral epithelial cells. Next in between, it's already written, I see something called basement membrane and then on the inside, I see endothelial cells so simple on the outside i will see epithelial cells on the inside i will see endothelial cells and in between i will be seeing the gbm the glomerular basement membrane now let's analyze the next photo guys let's look at the next picture that i have and suddenly what do i see has gone missing i see that the where are the podocytes the podocytes somewhere seem to have gone and that is what is referred to as effacement of foot processes that is what is referred to as effacement of foot processes which is the gold standard for what gold standard for minimal change disease minimal change disease diagnosis has to happen only by electron microscopy only and only by the effacement of these foot processes 
I hope this one is also clear. Uh, what is GBM made up of? Any basement membrane is always made up of the same thing. Any glomerular basement membrane is made up of a collagen. And which kind of collagen? Any basement membrane will be made up of type 4 collagen. So that answer is common to any basement membrane of the body. Okay, having said this, so done with this as well. Classical case of minimal change disease, nephrotic, nephritic or age. Two questions, age group and uh, which part or which syndrome does it come under. So minimal change disease, minimal age group. Minimal age group means this is the most common nephrotic that we have in childhood. In most common nephrotic in children is the answer. So they will always give you some minimal age and I'll tell you the age range. Usually it will be somewhere between 2 to 6 years. That's the most common age group of MCD. 2 to 6 years nephrotic syndrome first diagnosis coming to your mind should be MCD. Okay having said this moving on to the next spotter that I gave to all of you. Again I won't give you the site I want you to identify and if you don't give me an answer then I'll give you the site and some hints. Uh, sorry, one question I have from Dr. Medha. Food process loss seen in FSGS. Yes, uh, okay, Dr. Uh, Medha, effacement of food processes is seen in MCD. I didn't say it is only seen in MCD. It's not a specific finding. It is not at all specific. That's why I classically told you that when you have MCD, look for the age, look for the nephrotic syndrome profile, put everything together and then give a diagnosis of MCD. Because effacement of food processes can be seen in other conditions like you said FSGS also. Okay, having said that, coming back, what is this? I've got a couple of answers. Signet ring cells. Fine, so firstly, what is a signet ring cell? I'll see a cell like this. I have to make a ring out of it. So I'll see the nucleus will be making a nice ring out of it. This thing at the periphery is the nucleus. And who is filling it up? We will see it will be full of mucin. The ring over here, the ring over here is going to be full and full of mucin that is how you make a signet ring cell so when i go over here and i highlight this cell for example i will be seeing that fine yes if i look at it carefully the blue color nucleus is at the periphery and all has mucin let me highlight this one periphery nucleus and rest is mucin this one periphery nucleus mucin this one nucleus mucin so yes all of them are looking like rings these are sheets of signet ring cells these are sheets of signet ring cells now if i ask you organs let me see how many of you can answer if i say this is the stomach which kind of cancer comes to your mind i can see a few answers the kind of cancer coming to our mind is diffuse gastric cancer diffuse gastric cancer shows us signet ring cells next if i say that this is the ovary then what will you say in the ovary you will say ma'am this is a case of krokenberg tumor this is a case of Krokenberg tumor. If I say this is a case of breast, think which tumor of the breast can show us signet ring cells. Although not so many signet ring cells, but few of them it can show. Which breast tumor shows us signet ring cells? Very good. Invasive lobular carcinoma. So whenever signet rings will be given in the paper, stomach hai to diffuse gastric cancer, ovary hai, Krokenberg tumor. And in the breast, if they ask you, it is invasive lobular carcinoma. Moving on to the next picture. Again, it's a tough one. But let's see what all answers come our way. Then we'll, we'll sit and analyze this photo. What comes to your mind when I show you this picture? I've not given you any history. Maybe now I can... First I want to see the answers. Then I'll give you the history. Okay, waiting for... I was actually waiting for this the most for the discussion today. One answer I've got as... Okay, Schiller, do you will some glands, thyroidization. Okay, not on track. Let me give you glands wala theek hai. Okay, so I say that uh, this is from the stomach. Now anything coming to your mind? I have no evidence of stomach over here. Obviously, I am telling you this is from the stomach. Now tell me what all comes to your mind. 
obviously the three things that you're focusing on only are these three right your eyes are taking you towards these three all of you say ma'am adenocarcinoma simple what what logic did you put you put ma'am ne stomach bola hai gland gland and gland and if gland is there then ma'am is asking us about adenocarcinoma simple then i wouldn't have been looking forward to it since yesterday like i said it must be having some twist and turn in the story okay first and foremost someone said villus atrophy i'm talking about stomach so stomach we don't talk about villi right it would have been in the intestine not out here so what is this uh, guys i want you to focus on this last one i'll draw it out if you want you definitely have a gland undoubtedly there's a gland but do you see someone invading into the gland do you see some foreign person trying to invade the territory kuch dikh raha hai number 1 yes so you'll say yes ma'am i can see that there is someone trying to destroy this gland there is someone trying to destroy and the same cells look at the background also i i knew all of you were only focusing on these three round structures uh, you also had to look at the rest of the photo na look at the background you'll say ma'am background has all dot 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 lymphocyte kind of cells okay now think think of a tumor think of a tumor it has glands then those lymphocytes are trying to invade the territory have we heard of something called lymphoepithelial lesion now that's a photo which you guys always tend to ignore and that is exactly why i've got it up for you what do you mean by lel that is how they write it in the exam they will write it as lel lymphoepithelial lesion so you will say ma'am epithelium because we can see gland lympho because i just told you the territory is being invaded by lymphoid cells so which lymphoma are they talking about they're talking about maltoma anyway when i said the stomach the only lymphoma that should have first come to your mind should have been a maltoma so repeating guys maltoma shows us lymphoepithelial lesion that is lel and now you will tell me what are the two ways of pathogenesis of maltoma which bacteria can cause maltoma of the stomach maltoma stomach bacteria of the stomach is only one and that is the very famous h pylori so one way of having maltoma is having an h pylori infection coming to the next there is a translocation known as 1118 where else have i studied translocation 1118 exam going students which kind of uh, lymphoma or which kind of tumor in hematology marginal zone very good all of you are saying marginal zone lymphoma tends to show us 1118 exactly my point what is maltoma maltoma is nothing what kind of a lymphoma is this maltoma maltoma is nothing but a marginal zone lymphoma only so all the properties of marginal zone lymphoma would come back to a maltoma and if marginal zone lymphoma shows us translocation 1118 this means maltoma will also show us the same I hope this picture is clear. I'll show you the unlabeled version once again, so that you're not messing it up in the exam. You can see a gland over here. You can see the gland being invaded over here. So we call them lymphoepithelial lesion. Okay, very good. Having said this, let's come to the next one. I've given you a normal photo over here, and I've given you a disease over here, which you need to identify. Normal photo and disease. Compare. compare guys okay so celiac disease comes as a straight answer i agree with all of you but i would also want the findings so there are four findings that you look out for in a celiac disease let's highlight let's try and write down 1 2 3 4 what are the findings that i have to know for the exam okay so when i look at this picture normal i told you right this is the normal so you will say ma'am look at the normal villi such nice villi you are seeing over here but suddenly those villi have become flat over here i'm not seeing those villi so the first point that i have is villus atrophy that's the first thing that we consider in celiac disease second when you look at the normal these round round structures these round round structures are crypts these are referred to as crypt when i look at over here i'll see those round round structures have increased they are way too many they are way too many so i call it crypt hyperplasia crypt hyperplasia so what are the two findings one thing is becoming less 
वन थिंग इज बिकमिंग मोर सिंपल वन थिंग इज बिकम मोर सो इज देर अ काइंड ऑफ अ कॉम्पनसेशन गोइंग ऑन विच मैनी ऑफ यू आर टेलिंग मी करेक्टली सो यूल से येस मैम इफ वन थिंग वॉज बिकमिंग लेस द अदर इज बिकमिंग मोर दिस मीन्स द ओवरऑल थिकनेस इज कॉम्पनसेटेड द ओवरऑल थिकनेस इज गोइंग टू रिमेन द सेम एंड दैट इज एग्जैक्टली द थर्ड पॉइंट दैट आई वॉन्ट टू टॉक अबाउट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ दिस वॉज फोर एम एम देन दिस विल ऑल्सो रिमेन फोर एम एम बिकॉज वन वॉज डिक्रीजिंग एंड द अदर इज कॉम्पनसेटिंग ओके हैविंग सेट दिस कमिंग टू द फोर्थ वन ऑल ऑफ यू कॉल इट सीलियाक डिजीज इट्स टू डू विद आई होप यू ऑल रिमेंबर इट्स टू डू विद ग्लूटिन ग्लूटिन सेंसिटिविटी अ लॉट ऑफ इन्फ्लमेशन सो यू विल सी अ लॉट ऑफ दीज ब्लू कलर डॉट 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 काइंड ऑफ सेल्स ओवर हेयर ऑल्सो विद इन द एपीथीलियम इंट्रा एपीथीलियल लिम्फोसाइट्स आई ई एल इंट्रा एपीथीलियल लिम्फोसाइट्स एंड दैट्स एग्जैक्टली वाई आई गॉट दिस क्वेश्चन इन द एग्जाम प्लीज डू नॉट बी इन एनी काइंड ऑफ हरी इफ द एग्जामिनर हैज रिटन एल ई एल और इफ द एग्जामिनर हैज रिटन आई ई एल बिकॉज दिस साउंड वेरी सेम सिमिलर एंड इन द एग्जाम इन दैट स्ट्रेस एंगजाइटी टेंशन एवरी थिंग स्टार्ट लुकिंग द सेम सो रिमेंबर वेन आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट एल ई एल दैट इज लिम्फो आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट अ लिम्फो एपिथीलियल लीजन विच मीन्स आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट अ ट्यूमर I'm talking about a lesion means I'm talking about a tumor and which tumor am I talking about it's a maltoma whereas look at here over here I'm just talking about regular lymphocytes intra epithelial lymphocytes innocent looking inflammation cells lymphocytes and that is what will remind you of celiac disease so my sincere request to everyone in the exam keep your eyes and brain open lel and iel will not be the same i hope that is going to be done and dusted everyone's clear with this yes okay coming to the last image of the day and then we can wrap up so there are two pictures given one happens to be from the intestine one happens to be from the blood picture so let me know first tell me the diagnosis first tell me the diagnosis kya diagnosis socha hai and then we'll you know dissect the photos okay one answer i've got is whipple's disease guys try to put both pictures together na if you say whipple's disease that's not the right answer although two three of you have called it whipple's so how many of you attended the instagram uh, questions yesterday because question number 5 if i remember correctly question number 5 of yesterday's quiz was whipple's disease only whipple's disease ki diagnosis first i'll take that up when we are talking about whipple's disease you cannot make the diagnosis without a special stain whipple's disease ke liye you need pass positivity pass positivity is needed and over here i've not given you any kind of special stain secondly whipple's disease has nothing to do with blood you never see blood findings right here you are seeing a disease where inter Stain is also affected. Blood is also affected, and yes, I've got a couple of right answers. That is A beta lipoproteinemia. A beta lipoproteinemia is a disorder which can affect the intestine as well as the blood. So, firstly, if you look at the word A beta lipoproteinemia, lipoprotein, some lipid disorder. That is why you will see that these cells are looking whitish. These cells are basically looking whitish. Why are they looking whitish? Because there tends to be a kind of a lipid accumulation that has happened in them. Because fatty disorder है, lipid disorder है. And next, when you look at the blood, A for A, A beta lipoproteinemia shows you what in the blood. A for A, it shows us acanthocytes in the blood. So what do I mean by acanthocytes? You'll have a red blood cell, and it will show you these spikes. That is why acanthocytes are also referred to as the spur cells. That is why they are also referred to as the spur cells. So look at these cells, and are they showing me characteristic spikes everywhere? Yes. So remember, acanthocytes for A beta lipoproteinemia, and lipoprotein tells me that it's a lipid accumulation. So intestine will also be affected, and blood would also be affected. So if you had to put both together, this happens to be a case of. a beta lipoproteinemia i hope that is sorted we also wrap up the last question of the day we have not finished with the spotters i will be sharing one more pdf with you guys and that's for tomorrow tomorrow morning 7:30 i think few images of this pdf are also left and few more i'll be adding on today so again today i'll be sharing one uh, you know one pdf with you get your tentative answers ready and then tomorrow morning 7:30 again on a youtube live session we'll be meeting and we'll be discussing those i hope that's okay with everyone 
perfect study well all the best i'll be meeting you tomorrow morning and before that there are two uh, just uh, the 11 o'clock series that i want to remind you of 11 o'clock five questions out of which three questions will be mcqs and two questions will be image spotters so i hope you're ready for those 11 o'clock i'll be posting them on instagram okay yes thank you so much for joining in study well have a great great day and keep up the spirit keep up the positivity and the purpose of joining early morning is that itself right and i'll be meeting you guys again now tomorrow morning